Hi children, today I am going to start history lesson National Movement in India Partition and Independence between 1939 to 47. Now let us start the lesson. In this lesson we are going to learn about the final phase of national movement in India and about the circumstances that led to the partition of India. That is the main subject the final phase of national movement in India and about the circumstances that led to the partition of India and after effects of partition also. And the second world war was started in 1939 and ended in 1945. The British passed Government of India Act in 1935. This is the most important act passed by the British government. And according to this act, provincial autonomy was granted. Provincial autonomy means elections may be held in provinces and the parties that won in the elections can form the government. Autonomy means self-rule. In the provinces ruled by the British, autonomy was granted. But the right to vote was given to very few people. About 12% for provincial assembly elections and about 1% only for the central assembly elections. And there were 11 provinces in British India. And in 1937, when elections were held in these provinces, Congress party won 8 out of 11 provinces and formed the government working under the supervision of a British governor. There was self-rule but under the supervision of a British governor. And it was at that time that the Second World War was started between Axis powers that is Germany, Japan, Italy and Allied powers UK, France and USA. And now, Britain without consulting the Congress leaders decided that India will support Britain in the war as India was a colony of Britain at that time. They did not consult the Congress leaders and they only decided that India will participate in the war on behalf of Britain, on the side of Britain. And most Congress leaders were opposed to Hitler and also Mussolini. Mussolini's ideology was fascism. And most of the Indian leaders, they were opposed to this ideology of fascism. A fascist drive was started by Mussolini for the spread of his ideology in many sovereign countries by conquering them. And this was seriously opposed by the Congress leaders. And the Congress leaders felt that the British would see their double standards in their expectation that India should support them in war against Italy. That means the Congress leaders opposed fascism. So they will fight against Italy in the war not to help or support the British. So even after winning the second world war, the British need not give them full freedom. That was the idea of Britishers. And whereas the Congress leaders thought that as they are fighting on the side of the British, the British should make a promise of full freedom to India after winning the war. Now at that time, the British Prime Minister was Winston Churchill and he belonged to conservative party. And this party wanted to continue their rule in India as long as possible. But there was another party, Labour Party, and this party wanted to help Indians get freedom from the British rule. The British were willing to give India only dominion status. After the war also, the British were willing to give only dominion status to India. That means Indians can rule themselves but under the supervision of the British. But the Congress wanted a promise of full freedom after the Second World War and also demanded that national government should be set up at the centre immediately. And for this the British objected, saying that they have to protect the interests of many other communities in India and the Congress did not represent all Indians, like Muslim. That means Congress is only the party of the Hindus and it did not represent all the communities of India and Britishers because they are the rulers of India, they have to protect the interests of all the communities. And being the rulers of the country, they have to protect the interests of all these communities also. And the Congress was greatly upset at this. And all the Congress ministries elected in 1937 elections, they resigned in 1939 as a protest against this. And at that time, Whoever opposed the government were jailed for a long time without any trial in the court and even freedom of speech was curtailed. And between 1940 to 1941, Congress organized many individual satyagrahas to pressurize the rulers to promise freedom after the war. Of course, no mass movement was led at that time. 
Now let us see the Muslim League. The Muslim League was formed in 1906 by Muhammad Ali Jinnah. He was the leader of this Muslim League. And when the Indian leaders revolted against the British, the British wanted to punish the Congress and weaken its control over the people. For this, they applied divide and rule policy. We know Britishers are famous for this divide and rule policy. Even in India, they applied this policy. And now they, for this, they applied divide and rule policy more strictly now. Before it was applied in Vande Matra movement. At the time of Vande Matra movement, by separating Bengal into East and West. Now they applied the same divide and rule policy more strictly. And the British supported and encouraged Muslim League and its plans to weaken Congress. And it was during this period that Muslim League became more active in politics. The Muslim League demanded the British to create separate seats in all councils for which only Muslims would vote. And the League said that in India the majority are Hindus, so more Hindus are likely to be likely to get elected to the councils. Whereas the Muslims will have no representation or less representation in the councils to protect their interests. And if Muslim members are elected to the councils, these members will see to the problems of the Muslims. And this demand was accepted by the Congress and as a result, separate electorates were formed in 1909. Through Government of India Act 1909, separate electorates were granted to the Muslims. And this act is also known as Minto Marley Reforms. And in 1909, 37 elections, the Muslim League got only 4.4% of the total Muslim votes cast in the elections. Actually, the Muslim League was popular in provinces like United Provinces, Bombay and Madras. And it was weak in provinces like Bengal, NWFP, NWFP means North West Frontier Province and Punjab. And from these Bengal and NWFP and Punjab only, Pakistan was to be created. That means it was Muslim majority areas. These were. And in these Muslim majority areas, the Muslim League was weak. And in other areas like United Provinces, Bombay and Madras, where there was no Muslim majority, it was popular. And even in Sindh, the Muslim League could not form government. And in 1946, again elections were held for provincial and central assemblies. The Muslim League could win most of the Muslim seats this time. What was the reason for this victory? What made the difference in these 10 years? In 1937, it could not win. 1946, it won most of the seats. What was the difference and what was the reason? The League pointed out many issues and blamed Congress. And even when the League wanted to form coalition government with the Congress in United Provinces, because in United Provinces, Congress or Muslim League both did not get majority. So they wanted to, the Muslim League wanted to form coalition government along with the Congress. And then it was refused by the Congress. And also the Congress party banned its members to become members of Muslim League. And thus in these 10 years, the League could create the impression that the Congress was basically a Hindu party and did not want to share power with the Muslims. Now the Hindu Mahasabha and the RSS. RSS full form is Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh. The main aim of these two organizations was to unite all the Hindus to remove the divisions of caste and sect. And Congress tried hard to make the Muslims feel secure and remove the wrong impression that was created by the Muslim League and these two organizations also that Congress is a Hindu party. These gave a publicity that Congress is only a Hindu party. So Congress wanted to remove that wrong impression from the minds of the people. And Congress argued that Hindus and Muslims were not people of two different nations. Both belong to one Indian nation. The Pakistan Dissolution Many Muslims felt that there is a need to govern their own regions, to rule their own regions. The Urdu poet Muhammad Iqbal, remember well, Muhammad Iqbal, he wrote the famous song, Sare Jahan Se Achha, patriotic song. He spoke in his presidential address to the Muslim League in 1930. He was the president of Muslim League in 1930 and in his presidential speech, he said that there is a need for a separate North-West Indian Muslim state. 
Of course, he did not mention about the partition of the country at that time, but he said that there is a need for a separate Northwest Indian Muslim state. And the name Pakistan was coined by a Punjab Muslim student at Cambridge, Pakistan Rahmat Ali Chowdhury. And uh, Pakistan means Pak, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Kashmir, Sindh and Balochistan. And at that time, no one took it seriously. And on 23rd March 1940, the Muslim League moved a resolution demanding autonomy in Muslim domination areas. That means Muslims wanted to rule themselves. And this resolution also did not mention anything about the partition of the country. And in later years, it came to be called Pakistan Resolution. It is very important. Slowly, the idea of a separate nation, state of Pakistan, started gaining ground. And the Congress found it very difficult to fulfill the demands of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, who was the leader of the Muslim League. And between 1940 to 46, the Muslim League convinced the Muslim masses about the need for a separate Muslim state. What are the benefits? If we get a separate state for Muslims, what are the benefits? And a separate state for Muslims where there will be no competition from Hindu traders, businesses, businessmen, zamindars, and there will be full religious freedom for them. They can rule themselves as they like. And since 1942 to 45, many Congress leaders were imprisoned. The Muslim League was successful in its canvassing. Now, Quit India movement. The first major movement started by Gandhiji was non-cooperation movement. And the second one was civil disobedience movement. And the third major movement was Quit India movement. Now, let us see how this movement was started. In 1942, the British sent Cripps mission headed by Sir Stafford Cripps to India to negotiate talks with Gandhiji and the Congress leaders. But these talks failed as the Congress insisted that an Indian should be appointed as the defense member of his executive council by the Viceroy. And after the failure of this Crips mission, Quit India movement was started by Gandhiji. In August 1942, it was started by Gandhiji. And the slogan was Quit India. Gandhiji was, of course, do or die was also the slogan of Quit India movement. Gandhiji was imprisoned but the movement was carried out by younger activists. There were strikes all over the country. Students left their colleges. In many districts like Satara, Medinipur, independent governments were declared by the people. And it took more than one year for the British to suppress the rebellion. And in spite of Japan's victories in its imperial drive, the Indians felt that the Japan is a small country which could stand up against the European colonialists. Even the Indians can fight the British and drive them away. Now, Indian National Army. It was, of course, all of you know that it is formed by Subhash Chandra Bose. Subhash Chandra Bose wanted to take the help of Japan to fight the British. And so, secretly, he went to Germany and then to Japan and raised an army of Indian soldiers. It was called as INA. In 1942, he raised this army, Indian National Army. And who were these soldiers in INA? They were soldiers in the British Army and were captured by Japan as prisoners of war when Japan defeated Malaya and Burma. Malaya and Burma, they were colonized by the British. So, these soldiers were British soldiers who were captured as prisoners of war when Malaya and Burma were defeated by Japan in the war. And at that time, and Bose appointed these British soldiers in his Indian National Army along with some other soldiers. And many more also joined the INA and Gandhiji did not agree with Subhash Chandra Bose on the issue of taking Japan's help to fight the British. Gandhiji said that we can, we ourselves can get freedom for our country, no need to take help from Japan. But Bose, he stuck to his decision and continued his fight against the British with his INA. When the Second World War was won by the Allied powers, that is Britain, USA, USSR, INA was defeated by the British Army. And after this, it is believed that Bose died in a plane crash. Now the popular upsurge between 1946 to 48. The soldiers of INA, that is Indian National Army, who were defeated by the British, were tried in a court and given death sentence for being traitors. 
టైటిల్స్ మీన్స్ దేశద్రోహులు దోస్ హూ చీట్ ద నేషన్ ద గవర్నమెంట్ దోస్ ఆర్ కాల్డ్ ఎస్ ట్రేటర్స్ సో బికాస్ దే వర్ ట్రేటర్స్ దే వర్ గివెన్ డెస్ సెంటెన్స్ ద వరల్డ్ వార్ టూ ఎండెడ్ ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ ఫార్టీ ఫైవ్ అండ్ అట్ దట్ టైమ్ దేర్ వర్ ఫుడ్ షార్టేజెస్ హై ప్రైసెస్ బ్లాక్ మార్కెటింగ్ ఎవ్రీవేర్ అండ్ ఆన్ ఎయిటీన్త్ ఫిబ్రవరి నైన్టీన్ ఫార్టీ సిక్స్ ద గార్డ్స్ ఆఫ్ ద రాయల్ ఇండియన్ నావీ దట్ మీన్స్ రిన్ ఇన్ షార్ట్ ఫామ్ వీ కాల్ ఇట్ ఎస్ రిన్ రాయల్ ఇండియన్ నావీ రిన్ ఇన్ బాంబే వెంట్ ఆన్ ఇస్ హంగర్ స్ట్రైక్ యాజ్ ఎ ప్రొటెస్ట్ అగేన్స్ట్ బ్యాడ్ ఫుడ్ అండ్ డిస్క్రిమినేటరీ బిహేవియర్ ఆఫ్ ద బ్రిటిషర్ ద బ్రిటిషర్స్ డిస్క్రిమినేటెడ్ ద ఇండియన్ సెయిలర్స్ అండ్ ద వైట్ సెయిలర్స్ సో అగేన్స్ట్ దిస్ అండ్ ఈవెన్ బ్యాడ్ ఫుడ్ వాజ్ బీయింగ్ సర్వ్ టు ద ఇండియన్ సెయిలర్స్ అండ్ గుడ్ ఫుడ్ వాజ్ బీయింగ్ సర్వ్ టు ద వైట్ సెయిలర్స్ సో అగేన్స్ట్ దిస్ దే స్టార్టెడ్ ఎ హంగర్ స్ట్రైక్ ఆన్ ఎయిటీన్త్ ఫిబ్రవరి నైన్టీన్ ఫార్టీ సిక్స్ అండ్ ఇట్ స్ప్రెడ్ టు అదర్ నావెల్ బేసెస్ ఆల్సో అండ్ నావెల్ సెంట్రల్ స్ట్రైక్ కమిటీ వాజ్ ఎలెక్టెడ్ విత్ ఎంఎస్ ఖాన్ యాజ్ ఇట్స్ హెడ్ అండ్ దిస్ కమిటీ డిమాండెడ్ బెటర్ ఫుడ్ అండ్ ఈక్వల్ పే ఫర్ ఇండియన్ సెయిలర్స్ అలాంగ్ విత్ ద వైట్స్ అండ్ ఇట్ ఆల్సో డిమాండెడ్ రిలీజ్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియన్ నేషనల్ ఆర్మీస్ సోల్జర్స్ అండ్ అదర్ పొలిటికల్ ప్రిజనర్స్ అండ్ హండ్రెడ్స్ ఆఫ్ స్టూడెంట్స్ బోత్ హిందూస్ అండ్ ముస్లిమ్స్ కేమ్ అవుట్ టు సపోర్ట్ ద స్ట్రైక్ ఆన్ ఫిబ్రవరి ట్వంటీ సెకండ్ త్రీ ల్యాక్ మిల్ మిల్ వర్కర్స్ దే స్ట్రైక్ దేర్ వర్క్ అండ్ ఫాట్ విత్ ద పోలీస్ అండ్ ద ఆర్మీ హియర్ యూ కెన్ సీ ద ఫోటో వన్స్ ఇట్ వాజ్ గివెన్ ఇన్ అవర్ సమిట్ టు ఎగ్జామ్ అండ్ దిస్ ఈజ్ ఎ ఫోటో ఆఫ్ మెమోరియల్ ఫర్ ద నావెల్ గార్డ్స్ హూ రివోల్టెడ్ ఫర్ ఇండియాస్ ఫ్రీడమ్ ఇన్ నైన్టీన్ ఫార్టీ సిక్స్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ మెమోరియల్ రిమెంబర్ ఇట్ నా ముస్లిం లీగ్ అండ్ కాంగ్రెస్ నైన్టీన్ ఫార్టీ సిక్స్ ఇట్ వాజ్ ఎ ఇయర్ ఆఫ్ స్ట్రైక్స్ ద ఇయర్ నైన్టీన్ ఫార్టీ సిక్స్ వాజ్ నోన్ యాజ్ ఇయర్ ఆఫ్ స్ట్రైక్స్ అండ్ మెనీ అజిటేషన్స్ అండ్ స్ట్రైక్స్ టుక్ ప్లేస్ ఇన్ దిస్ ఇయర్ అండ్ అజిటేషన్ వాజ్ స్టార్టెడ్ బై బెంగాల్ బై స్మాల్ అండ్ పూర్ ఫార్మర్స్ an agitation was started in bengal it was started by the it was led by the provincial kisan sabha and the small farmers they demanded that their share of harvest should be increased because before they were given only half or even less of the or less than half of the produce as their share now they demanded that they must be given two portions out of three instead of half or even less and that is why it is called tibhaga movement three parts they demanded two parts out of three and it was led by provincial kisan sabha and in hyderabad also telangana peasants movement was led and the telangana farmers they made three demands they said that debts of farmers should be written off written off is cancelled bond and labor to be stopped and land should be distributed to those who tilled it that means land must be given only to those who are tilling dunne varde bhoomi visenu like that land to be distributed to those who tilled it and another armed revolt of peasants took place in Travancore in Punakra Vailar now muslim league and congress negotiation for transfer of work power as a first step towards granting full freedom to india the british agreed to create an entirely indian central executive council except for the viceroy and the commander in chief of the armed forces except these two posts that means these two posts will be given to the britishers viceroy and the commander in chief of the army forces and all the others to the executive council may be elected by the indians and these talks also broke down because mohammad ali jinnah again demanded that the muslim league should be given absolute powers to choose all the muslim members of the council because th- there must be some muslim members also in the council to be elected so these muslim members must be elected only by the muslims that was the demand of mohammad ali jinnah but this demand was not acceptable to the congress party and many others also they did not accept it now a possible alternative to partition cabinet mission now let us see in march 1946 cabinet mission was sent to india a three member mission was sent to delhi to see how far the league's demand was genuine what is what was the league's demand league demanded that the muslim members to the executive council must be elected only by the muslims and to examine this league's demand and to suggest a suitable political framework if freedom is given to india that is the work given to the cabinet mission and this cabinet mission was sent in march 1946 
and this cabinet mission visited the whole country for three months and they submitted their report. And in their report, they recommended that a loose three-tier confederation should be set up in India. Three-tier confederation means government at three levels, just like we have today: central level, state level, and local level. Three-tier confederation, but India was to remain united. That means India should not be partitioned. India should remain united. Initially, all the major parties accepted this plan, but it was not acceptable to the Muslim League or to the Congress Party. So, they did not agree to the cabinet mission's proposal. Now, direct action day, sixteenth August, nineteen forty-six. The Muslim League now felt that its demands cannot be met through discussions. Only through discussions or demanding anything, they cannot get their demands fulfilled. So, it must ask people to come out onto the streets. And with this aim, the Muslim League decided. to declare 16th august 1946 as direct action day and on this day riots broke out in calcutta lasting several days for many days riots broke out in calcutta and many were killed thousands of people were killed in these riots and by march 1947 this violence spread to many parts of northern india also and in february 1947 lord wevel he was succeeded by Mount Batten as the viceroy. Lord Wevel, he was replaced by viceroy by Mount Batten. He was the last viceroy of India, Mount Batten. And Mount Batten, he called for a last round of talks to move ahead towards Indian freedom, but these talks also proved unsuccessful. So he announced that British India would be freed, but also divided. Now he decided that partition will be done. Muslim majority areas of Punjab, NWFP that is North West Frontier Province, Sindh, Baluchistan, and East Bengal. East Bengal is the present Bangladesh. All these will be created into Pakistan state, and uh, the formal transfer of power for, from British government to Pakistan would be done on 14th, and to India it will be transferred on 15th of August 1947. And this solution was the only. workable solution at that time so he took the decision and he partitioned the country now partition and migrations with the partition of the country a painful situation arose both in india and pakistan most hindus living on one side that is pakistan felt insecure and they were forced to leave and go back to india likewise muslims living on the other side of the border were forced to leave india and go back to pakistan and many of these people did not know what was happening and why it was happening they had to leave their properties and go back to pakistan or india they knew only this one they got frustrated at this and killed each other many were in refugee camps in relief camps around 1.5 crore hindus and muslims were displaced due to partition 2 to 5 lakh people were killed they moved out on trains to find out new homes one such scene you can see in this picture how people are traveling on sitting on the trains and gandhi ji was moving around the relief camps spreading the message of peace among the people and this was not the independence that he wanted for india so gandhi ji fasted and did not celebrate our first independence day now assassination of gandhi ji on 15th august 1947 when the whole nation was celebrating the first independence day gandhi ji was in naukhali in bengal spreading the message of peace among the muslims and the hindus among the people who got hurt who were in relief, uh, relief camps finally on 30th january when gandhi ji was going to attend his all religion prayer meeting he was shot dead by nathuram godse nathuram godse was once a member of hindu mahasabha so on 14th february 1948 all india hindu mahasabha decided to suspend its political work now let us see the integration of princely states there were around 550 princely states under the british power when british were ruling india there were 550 princely states and they enjoyed different levels of sovereignty they were ruled by the princely states and these native princes were under the control of the britishers when the british granted freedom to india and they 
moved away these princely states were to become free and they were given freedom to join either the indian union or the newly created pakistan state or to remain independent three choices were given to these princely states they can remain independent or they can join the indian union or pakistan state the ordinary people did not want to be further ruled by the monarchs and the congress supported the popular movements and asked the people of princely states to join the indian union and help in framing the new constitution sardar patel who was the then home minister he was given charge of integrating the princely states in july 1947 he was given this responsibility he discussed with the princess about the need to join in india and he even made it clear about army action further to be taken who did not join if anyone refuses to join the indian union army action will be taken against those states that was made clear by sardar patel and all by august 1947 all the states except kashmir junagadh and hyderabad agreed and signed the instrument of accession with india instrument of accession means it is an agreement to be signed by all the states which agreed to join the indian union and all the states except kashmir junagadh and hyderabad signed this agreement and following the next two years the other three states were also joined hyderabad nizam played some tricks but finally joined india after the police action was taken by sardar patel in september 1948 and after integration of princely states the native princes were given pensions called privy purses in independent india because these native princes now they don't have any source of income for them so prince privy purses the pensions were granted to the native princes but these privy purses were also abolished in 1971 by indira gandhi's government they were abolished to establish socialism equality of all the people in the name of socialism she abolished these privy purses what are privy purses privy purses are the pensions granted to the native princes after partition now that is the end of the chapter i am giving you homework as usual do it and i have also given the key for blanks please first complete the blanks and then compare your answers with the 